Glass is one of those things that inspires more cliches than you can imagine. It has a life of its own. It's true, it does. It basically, the glass won't do all the time what you want it to do. It's hypnotic because it's fluid and plastic, and yet it immediately goes from butter to toffee to cardboard to stone and becomes rigid. You have to treat it really carefully. So when Mary came to talk about the project in September, she unfolded the whole concept that she had for her New Dawn sculpture. And she showed me some of the research she'd been doing into women's suffrage, particularly the images of the scrolls in the act room, which I found really fascinating. And those images really resonated with me. And we started talking about how we could actually bring those into the sculpture. The glass blowing process starts off by taking a piece of solid rod color, cutting it and placing it into a kiln and bringing it up to 525 degrees. So these are powdered glass colors. I'm just laying this out on a steel table. So this is actually quite enjoyable and therapeutic. It's a little bit like painting. Um, and you've got to bear in mind that although these colors look a certain way, some of them are opals and some of them are transparent, so they won't actually turn out quite the same way as they look on the finished piece. Then you preheat a blowing iron and pick that piece of color up and reheat it in the glory hole till it becomes fluid. Then you roll it on a steel table to chill the outside and introduce air by blowing down the iron. So the setup here really hasn't changed very much for 2,000 years. A Roman glassmaker would probably recognize what you see on this bench. At that stage, you then shape it, and as it cools down sufficiently, you gather another layer of clear glass over the surface and take it back to the bench. Cool it on the outside with a wooden block, shape it with a pad of wet newspaper by hand and start to inflate it. To make a larger piece, you then get another gather of clear glass and go through that stage again. The next stage is to blow the bubble up and shape it. You then cover it with silver leaf, which is easier said than done, because the glass of this stage is somewhere around about 500 degrees. Once you've done that, reheat that again and roll it in the powder glass colors that are laid out on the steel table. Reheat again to melt those colors into the surface and ask your assistant to bring you a punty iron or finishing iron. You join that punty iron onto the base and chill the neck, tap the iron and it should transfer from the blowing iron onto the finishing iron. At this stage, you have to think about opening it out into the required shape. You gradually open up the rim. Get the piece very, very hot and start spinning it out into a plate. It's dead simple when you know how.
the process, and now we've only got another 167 to make. I've never glass blown before, I have to say. I've seen it, and, and of course, a good glass blow makes it look really easy. Having a go yourself makes you realize it's not easy at all. <laughs> I want to have something which inspires 14-year-old girls when they walk around Parliament, and they see all these men's, all these statues, and they think, where's my place in this? And I want them to know that they have a place. The whole movement and the whole idea of Parliament slowly getting in behind, it's too slow, but we're getting there, and today was a great encouragement. I think it's spectacular enough to make quite a difference and people are going to really come and see it and ask and that's what we want. Oh it's very important because you know, history is made of memories and that's why I think to, to mark in the House of Commons particularly given the enormous journey we've made over such a short distance uh, I'm glad that we're doing this and it will be beautiful as a piece of art but also meaningful because it commemorates something important.